Kyle. Hey. What? Oh, hey. We got to do the show. Dude. Uh, <laughs> show? Yeah, the show. You think we weren't doing the show because the whole quarantine thing? Well, yeah, I figure there's, you know, something going on out there. I, I'm kind of stuck here. Uh, well, we're going to do the show still. So I need you to pause your fucking game. <sighs> get your head into it. Because we're recording. Our fans can't go a whole two weeks without us, Kyle. We have to record for the fans. Well, for the fans. it's for the fans. <laughs> uh. Hello and welcome back to the 102nd episode of Good, Better, Bad, Bad, the show we watch terror movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo. Joined, as always, <laughs> by my other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Uh As we saw in the intro to this episode, um, we're self- quarantining uh we're still on lockdown um but we didn't want to skip an episode so we're gonna try exactly. this out and see how it goes i brought virtual <laughs> kyle into the studio <laughs> we had to make sure that i i we honor the integrity of the show and yeah. that i am still placed in my chair you are still in your chair if you can't tell in the shot that's literally a samsung 30 inch tv sitting in <laughs> in kyle's chair broadcasting uh kyle from his home studio uh we'll right into the good better bad bad studio and give them to you the people <laughs> the people uh, so we're still gonna try this out. It may go terribly, but we think it'll work out. Uh, we watched uh, a, uh, another thing before we get started, just so people aren't asking. My face is fucked up because I had a weird allergic reaction. <laughs> Brian, that's never happened before, right? <laughs> Drop in footage from the uh, I think it was the Battlefield Earth review. Yeah, yeah I think it maybe, was Battlefield. Yeah, um, exact same thing happened. I still don't know what or why. I, it's b mostly better, but I'm still a little uh, a red and a little. Um, leathery so <laughs> we're just gonna go with it um but uh so that's what's wrong with my face uh but i'm okay i'm not dying i don't think at least not any faster than usual so kyle for this week's episode uh we watched a movie that was recommended by a fan that i don't remember where i or like if it, uh, facebook i don't remember um, this is a film a that uh it definitely caught our eye for one particular reason and that was the distributor Yes, it ITN. is. ITN. ITN, baby. And if you it, don't know anything... You would know yes. from Alex Mays. I need to know everything. And I mean everything. Alright. Yes, Alex Mays and Ed, all of his films are distributed by ITN, uh, which makes them... Uh, which means that ITN is responsible for some of our favorite films. You promised me you'll tell me a story about your tattoo. You want to hear a story, man? Okay, little champion. You want to hear a story, man? Okay. Once upon a time, man. Uh, also, I just want to mention that we're at uh, Drinking Bush Light at 3 in the afternoon stage of quarantine. That's where we are. I may have to become household. an alcoholic. <laughs> All right. So uh, the movie's called Trust No One, but it looks like it's Trust Number One. Number One? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled N O. It's Trust and then N O and then the Number One, which makes it look like Trust Number One. It, but it, it is, is trust interesting no one. when I when we read the synopsis of the film and watched like the trailer, we're like. This seems a little too high concept for ITN to have their hands on. Uh, and then we I don't know if I it. thought that. <laughs> the whole point was to find a missing drive. Wait, what drive? What's on it? Data. And then we watched it and we were like, what is this drug infused roller coaster? It is. It, the thing that's most hilarious to me is how similar it is to an Alex Maisonette film. It is. It's very similar in that regard. Like, it, at least it, in the terms of, like, the quality, it's the, the terrible editing, terrible acting. The more you tell me, the more I can help. He never killed that man. But they sure tortured him like he did. A script that's kind of incomprehensible, where scenes just occur. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm tired. I can't sleep. I have no family. Everyone thinks I'm a frickin' murderer. And like the editing for this film is mind boggling. So what do you think we should do? I don't know. Do you have it? 
I don't even know what's on the drive you're looking for. You don't need to know. Oh, it's the, the worst thing. The editing this film is, it's, it's like somebody was on Adderall the whole time. Chief. Oh my god, it just cuts, and so many times shots cut before they should, like they'll cut off people talking, it's, it's wild. What's up guys? Oh, this is not okay. Uh, so let's, let's get right into it. Uh, it's a 2019 release, um, but I have a feeling it filmed a little bit before that. It stars and is written by Douglas Ruyard. Ruyard? Ru Ru yeah, yes, uh, and he, this is his brainchild, his baby. Uh, this is his film, uh, and he didn't direct this one, but we'll talk about that later. Um, this was directed by the guy who edited it, I believe, as well. Mm. But he wrote this film. This is his baby. Uh, and we kick right in with real mediocre drone shots and very dramatic music. And I was like, well, this is a promising start. Um, as we've mentioned before on the show, I have a drone pilot's license. I've flown drones quite a bit. So when I watch... How good of a some, job do they do, Brian? They're so bad, Kyle. <laughs> they're so bad. It's so bad. There's so, there's so many parts where they... They're like, there's so many parts where they drift in, get oh. the shot they wanted, yep. and they just leave it. They drift out, and they don't cut around it. They don't cut no. it short yes. to make oh. it look nice. Rick, welcome back. This this first one is one of the first ones where it stuck out to me where they have it, they're coming, it's just like the setup to the story. We're hearing some sounds of like violence in a, in, and we're like pushing in on a house. Where, where is it? Where is it? Like on the lakeside house or whatever. Um, This is like where our story starts. And the drone shot looks fine for like a little bit. And then it, it they hang on it. And then it, it gets to where it needs to go, and then it stops, and they then it starts going up it. and backwards, and they stay on the shot. <laughs> Tell me where it is. What are you doing? Oh, it's infuriating. Um, and th that's not even the worst one in this movie. There's so many where it's like a little bobble in the shot that you could just do a different take. Like it's not, oh, so many, uh, the drone work in this movie. Kyle, I could talk about the opening line, the not line, the opening like on screen thing, uh, words mm. that pop up for four hours. It's, Forever, yeah. It's, it, it's an incomprehensible sentence. I just want to read this and talk about it for a minute. It says, when the new millennium began, fear of what could have been lost what? was. Was. What is it? Kyle. Y2K. I, turned to, I know, but no, 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 no. I turned to Katie and I was like, Katie, look at this sentence and try to help me understand what this sentence means. And she literally could not. It's it's incomprehensible It it because so what is. I thought I was having a stroke reading it. When the new mm. millennium began, fear of what could have been lost was. was. So what was lost? The fear of what could have been lost was lost? What? I don't. What is the, the sentence like circles in on itself in like a weird paradox. I. It feels Y2K. like it was translated. It, Y2K, dude. Y2K. Uh, that's it's, not. It feels like you, it was you don't translated remember, remember and then Y2K translated when back they would into literally English. Literally, just make a statement. And they would just make a statement and be like, "Yeah, but Y2K explains that." <laughs> that is spoilers. This movie is about Y2K, kind of, which is <laughs> wild. What a weird thing to have your movie be about. Y2K, sir. We got to get this to the commander. But yeah, I thought it was a translation error. I was like, oh, maybe the guy who wrote this movie is like, English is not his first language. No, it definitely is. <laughs> it's just, this, this sentence makes no sense. Oh, it's mm -hmm. also a Christmas movie, Kyle. We could have done this for Christmas. Didn't even realize. It's This takes place over the week from like Christmas to New Year's. Uh, and I because when they were filming, there were just Christmas trees and decorations everywhere. So they were just like, well, it's that's when we're setting it now. <laughs> Uh, well, the whole thing was like it was a, it was a, all about cataloging ten years later. 
Yeah. Which, yeah. much like Alex Maisonette. Yes, yeah. That, oh, that's a, they, they kept talking at the end of this movie about 10 years ago, there was this thing, and I was like, oh, God, no, not again. Listen, 10 years ago, the U.S. government backed up military securities onto a drive. A, a big thing was, like, it's all about all the information that's on this drive, right? Yes, it's, it's a, a flash, flash drive. drive. Yeah. It's a flash drive, which, by the way, was only patented in April of 1999. I had to look that up. But it's a super secret government flash drive, it's, Kyle. Yeah, super secret government. Do you know how big those flash drives were when they were first created? Yeah, like 256K. No, 8 megabytes. Yeah, yeah. That's the biggest one they had was 8 megabytes. It is, to be fair, it put, is apparently all... Apparently they put a Word document on it and yeah. a link to a website that didn't exist yet. USdebt.org. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking weird. Oh, it's amazing. I love it so much. <laughs> this isn't just military locations and... Launch codes, man, this is U.S. Treasury access. So you didn't know about this? No. So uh, our guy's a detective. He gets some curbside delivery. Uh, he's practicing that social distancing here in the beginning. He gets his coffee <laughs> delivered through a window to him. Um, and I, that scene later where they bring that back is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. But we'll talk about it when he gets coffee <laughs> later like, in the movie. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit. So our guy's a detective and he goes to this house. Um, where a murder has occurred. Murder in this house. Uh, he's investigating. He's talking to, like, the medical examiner and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the wife, they bring out the wife of the dead guy to interview, <laughs> which she's this, incredible. This woman, some great acting in this scene. He loved me. He loved his job. He just never should have taken that assignment. What assignment? Some government thing. I don't know. I never knew what he did. But when, my favorite thing is when they introduce, you can tell a lot in this movie that they didn't get all the coverage they needed because so many times. There's so many times they'll just cut to a police officer looking around. And yep. it's just like, all right, you just did that because you had two takes that you needed to splice together. Yes. Oh my god, it happens so many times. It happens like three times in this scene, but uh, one mm -hmm. of them I love is they couldn't even find good shots to splice in. One of them is the medical examiner kneeling next to the body, and it's like super shaky. Like, it's clearly like they were taking the camera off the tripod or something, and it was rolling still, and they just put that in the film, and they're like, ah, that's good enough. Let me introduce you to Miss Clayton. She found them this morning when she came home from work. Officer? I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> that one guy who's standing by the door is just like, he's like, mm. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Okay. But he did talk about a mark. Uh, so he's in, he's talking to her and she's like, yeah, he got, he was in jail and he just got out. He was in jail for like 10 years for killing a guy, even though he didn't he'd actually kill a guy. And now he's out and then he was murdered and I don't know what happened. And her acting in this scene is 90% how big can incredible. I make my eyes? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> she just like stretches her eyes wide and it's incredible. So then we cut to our guy driving somewhere. This, this movie is also a little complicated to explain because it's a lot of just like jumping from scene to scene without much connective tissue. And, mm. and scenes happen in orders that kind of make sense but also could go in other orders. <laughs> By the way, I don't know who they got that let them borrow an – if you saw the license plate on the Torino that he was yeah, driving yeah. the whole time, it says antiques. This oh. was somebody's like baby like yeah. car that they somehow convinced to let them drive around for this film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, my favorite thing is because it's it's this old you know muscle car. It just blows out our microphone every time it drives past the yeah. camera. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then, so he goes to the police station. We get a terrible drone shot of the police sign that could have just been, this is the thing where sometimes you'd use a drone way too much. This could have just been a locked down regular shot with your camera, but we got a drone, mm -hmm. so we might as well fly it forward three feet and shoot the sign. It's also the situations where you could just as easily have it on the tripod. Oh, he's driving up to it and you just keep panning and, oh, look, there's the police sign. Yeah. Oh, whoa. No, we got a drone, Kyle. We're going to get our money's worth. <laughs> Even if they look terrible. I love, so he's he's working at the police station for a minute and he goes home for dinner. This is where I introduced to his wife character. Uh, the wife character who gets wife, forgot the about. The wife character is, yeah, I guess fiance. I don't know. He proposes well, to that's what That's, that's the, the scene I want to talk about is this scene. He gets home oh, and yeah. he's like, she's like, oh, I made dinner. And he goes, oh, what'd you make? 
Pasta? And he's super excited about me. What's for dinner? Yes. What's this? Nothing. You made pasta. I did. Merry Christmas. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> also, also, it's Christmas. Yeah. Christmas pasta. Christmas pasta. And the only you thing- You get stovetop stuffing, <laughs> you get turkey, and you get honey glazed ham. Now, granted, if you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry. I guess you can kind of eat the stuffing still. Yeah, probably. Unless, yeah, the gravy yeah. used. Yeah, but it, I love too, it's like the only thing we can see is a giant pan full of ground beef. <laughs> it's like, yes. What is, okay. <laughs> Making uh, spaghetti for Christmas. All right. <laughs> yeah. And then, like you said, he goes, oh, this let's celebrate this special night. And then just randomly proposes to her with zero fanfare. Do you remember this morning when I said I'd be home tonight and we can celebrate? Yes. Are you serious right now? Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> and the movie... I was like, is this a real proposal or is this like a joke? Like, what is this? They they did for the entirety of it. And, and by the way, there's a sequel to this in post-production. Right oh, now. I was I had a note later. I didn't know if you saw yeah. that. Yeah. And the, the, the reason that I have to bring that up is because they set up so much that she is going to be in danger at some point. Spoiler doesn't come to fruition no, in this film. Not at all. Not which at makes all. me speculate it's going to be in the sequel. Yeah. It, it may be. Because, yeah, I was wondering. Because, yeah, there's a lot. That storyline with her, they forget about halfway through. And then at the end, she's just like, he. there's an insert <laughs> shot of him coming home that they shot on their cell phone. And he's like, oh, it's okay. I, everything's fine looks now. Particularly <laughs> awful in that shot. I also love, so in this moment, he comes home to do some research, and his his super in-depth research is Googling the victim's name. <laughs> and then he's like, he literally goes, gotcha. Gotcha. And I'm like, you Google his name and that was, okay, that was your big break. You didn't just Google, because I also looked up that website. Yeah. And it's literally a fake search engine google, yeah. that you can use for movies yeah yeah no for sure when <laughs> i said google i meant that's the act of what he it, does it's he's, what the, he's, it's, yeah it's what it's supposed to be but it's yeah. like one of those weird things of like branding oh, this is something yeah. that is specifically made for people to use in films so he now he knows the he googled the victim's name so now he cracked the I, it doesn't matter the details of the mystery are irrelevant it's all just very sort of vaguely alex mays neil breen the government is out to get people because of government secrets is the yeah, plot of the film exactly this drive holds top secret intel two copies were made in case y2k caused a computer crash y2k secrets <laughs> it's so ridiculous that and my favorite thing is that the project is called operation y2k <laughs> like that's what the like secret thing that they're on is operation y2k a surfacer Oh, it's incredible. Better remember to um, stock up on toilet paper for Y2K, also coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> that was the big thing back then, and people stocked up on all sorts of crazy supplies. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar um, right now. Yeah. So then he calls the prison. I guess this is what he Googled. Is he found the warden of this prison or something? <laughs> this warden was some... I, I don't know if it's somebody they found through an agency or something. This is a guy who... I think either understood too much that what he was doing was not particularly great or was too far out of his own senile mind to understand what he was doing. As you know, we're a private correctional facility for ex-military and government personnel. His treatment was basic food, closed cell, visitation once a month. Uh, my favorite thing setting up this first shot though is so he calls, he finds this prison and he calls the warden. And the prison that they showed, did you notice the prison changed over the course of the movie from that building we see the first not. time? <laughs> this first time, unless it's two different buildings, but I'm pretty sure this is the prison because he calls in the wardens there. Happy holidays, Westside Correctional. Warden, please. And the, the, we see a drone shot exterior setup of it, and it's very clearly a fucking school 
because in the wide shot of this prison, there are children playing out front of the building. Like school children, like playing hopscotch out front of the building. And I was like, okay, so either this is a prison where kids hang out or it's a prison for kids. What is, what is this? It's so strange. Uh, then he goes back to the crime scene to investigate, I guess, after he calls the warden. He goes back to the crime scene and he gets there and he's the wife's not there, but he hears a noise and then he runs and hides behind a tree and then nothing fucking happens and the scene ends. It's the weirdest. I don't even know why this part's in the movie. Chief. I'm out of Clayton's. Something's going on here. And then we're, we're introduced to a guy getting out of prison. Good morning, Mark. Please have a seat. How are you feeling? Happy, I'm assuming that you're released now. Um, he's so getting out of prison uh, and he was being tortured in there because they're looking for something. Turns out we find out later they're looking for this, this drive, this flash drive. Um, mm -hmm. And the plot eventually we figure out is that there are these six guys who were all in prison. They're all ex special ops, as we find out in numerous scenes. They're all s black ops secret agents or whatever. Why is your name on here? Do you know what's going on? Listen, we were all ex military, okay? Secret service types, black ops. Kyle, I'm going to need you to stop Googling or I'm going to come over there and I'm going to fight sorry. you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you Googling? Is it relevant? <laughs> No, no. Oh, God, what are, Kyle! <laughs> turn your computer, turn your monitor off, your other monitor turn, off. Turn your computer off. Turn That's your other monitor smart. off. Uh, so then, I don't even remember what happens. Uh, the guy gets out of prison. Um, introduced to Rick, the, the terrible, creepy actor guy who's... Kyle, so help me God. Stop looking yeah. at your other computer yeah. monitor. <laughs> So we're introduced to Rick, the creepy doll guy. Just wanted to confirm my appointment for this afternoon. Thank you, sir. And Rick, the creepy doll guy, he's painting a doll head or something. It's they're, they're like, he's creepy and weird, or that is the thing. That's the plot, or that's his character to moment. Um, and he's also one of the guys who got out of the prison and he's being ordered to murder a person, I believe. All right, you ready to get started? Final assignment? Or something like that. Kyle, I can see you doing it still. I can see. I know, I know. Just give me a second. Somebody's no, you're fucking fine. around. You're fine, you're fine. If you need a minute, just take a minute. Just let me know. Yeah. Basically, a whole lot of a whole bunch of people got banned, and so somebody's in a zone they're not supposed to be at, and then they're threatening to train me. So, cool. <laughs> no yeah. big deal. Just dealing with some EverQuest nonsense. Yeah, it's it's EverQuest nonsense, but it's somebody who's potentially being a, a dick. Okay, that should be good. Um, guy with the doll heads, Rick. He's crazy doll head murderer guy. Uh, who's also was a prisoner. Um. And then we also, so we introduce him as this guy, and then we there's a great moment where we cut back to Mark in the in the office with the doctor who becomes the bad guy of the film, evil office doctor guy, uh, doctor something or another, Stevens maybe. Um, Hang on. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I just, uh, my guy's dying. Are you playing the game right now? <laughs> no. Well, no, I'm tracking. Okay, well... <clears throat> All right, where's call at? Is he in here? Well, that riot tracker just killed our tracker. Uh, he summoned a pet. He FD'd. And he, he does that to pet track. And then uh, it got cl too close and aggroed me. All right. That was inner inner office politics. Sweet. So welcome the back to Better Bad Bad. I'm dead, so it's not like we can get distracted anymore. Oh, it's not we getting distracted, Kyle. 
It's me getting distracted. <laughs> Get out of here, yeah. we getting distracted. Uh, so I don't remember what the fuck I was talking about. Um, so Rick got released at the same time. He's a creepy doll murderer, man. He murders a bunch of people or something. I think mm. he murders the other. Basically, the plot of this movie is there's a government do- doctor guy who wants the drive, and he's you working with the warden to he put these six guys who thought they knew where the drive was into prison uh, so that he could try to torture the the location of the drive out of them yes which well, is five of them are in prison one of them who knows where the drive is is not yes uh and that is the brother of our main mm-hmm. character uh his name's ryan our main character's name is doug um and uh, so Rick is one of the guys, and he's out there murdering people. He's a murderer. He's a creepy murderer. One of my favorite things is that when Doug goes home that night from the bar, he's sleeping, and he has, like, night terrors. And it's just, like, flashbacks yes. of different scenes. And then he wakes up, and he goes and takes a shower. A shower in his... <laughs> This you have to just show them what oh, this looks like. It looks sh- ridiculous. It's incredible. My favorite thing is you know he thought it was so cool because so his his girlfriend gave him this like cross necklace earlier. And when we yeah. cut into the shower, he's leaning with his hands on the wall and he's got the cross he's got in, it his, in his teeth. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, but this like there's it, it constantly is cutting between him and like these these throws of agony. Yes, almost. He's in literally the shower. like ah. <laughs> Screaming on the <laughs> ground of the shower. And this guy 100% wishes he was Mark Wahlberg. This guy, yes. like, he's just, he's, he's, this is a guy who's seen The Departed 800 times and it's his favorite fucking movie. <laughs> and he just wishes he could be Mark Wahlberg. He loves the movie so much. They find Mark dead in the, uh, not Mark Wahlberg. No. They find Mark, the other prisoner who was released, dead in an alley behind the bar the next day, and they think it's suicide, but our guy's like, no, it's not suicide. I know. I saw him at the bar last night. It couldn't have been suicide. It looks like a suicide to me. It's not a suicide. His name's Mark. He was at the same bar I was at last night. Was he with anyone? I was like, well, okay, if you say so. But now they're getting a they're getting a pattern of these prisoners being murdered because uh, now we had the first guy in the cabin, and now we got this guy who was also murdered, and our cop guy is starting to put some shit together. Funny thing is, he was released from the same exact prison as Robert Clayton a week ago. Do you think it's coincidence? Any ideas? One. So Rick has murdered this guy now and he goes back to talk to the doctor and I got to talk about this scene real quick. It's great because he's talking to the doctor who's the bad guy in this movie and Rick's delivery is incredible. I'm tired. I can't sleep. I have no family. Everyone thinks I'm a freaking murderer. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm a freaking murderer. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm a freaking murderer. <laughs> oh, he's so good. That, it, and his his... He is one note, and that is one note for the entire thing. Yeah. No change. For 10 years, I went through hell. Do you even know what happened in there? What they did to me? I don't have it. Never did. What exactly? I don't know. Nothing. Uh, this is where we're introduced to Doug's brother, uh, Ryan, who lives in a cabin mm. down, by the, <laughs> down by the river. Um, <laughs> lives in a cabin down, <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> Uh, they haven't seen each other since they were little kids, and the re- <laughs> the reason they don't talk anymore is because Doug <laughs> accidentally shot their mother to death with a gun. <laughs> okay. Man, it's been a long time. Yeah. Since my dad? <coughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, no yeah. 
I'm glad you're. But I'm glad f- I'm watching you through a TV right now. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> they, they they have a flashback to where they found a gun. Yeah, as kids in like a and secret mother, compartment in the wall. The mother like just comes in. He's like, "What do you got there?" <laughs> just get shot. She gets immediately dead shot. Dead. Yeah. Hey dog, look at this. Give me that. It's not a toy. Oh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's supposed to be dramatic, but it's freaking hilarious. Uh, and Doug <laughs> thinks it's his fault and blames himself for it still. So that's like a, been a sticking point between them. Look, man, it wasn't your fault. Okay, you gotta know that. I know. Every one of their conversations is my favorite, where it's just him explaining the background of all these like military guys. And he's like, if this was written, sounds like it was written by me in college doing no research, who did literally <laughs> zero research on any of this stuff. And it's just Ugh. like, or, the, or they're like vamping. And he's like, explain these guys background. He's like, they're secret service, black ops, uh, Navy SEALs. <laughs> like, <they're really laughs> Do you know what's going on? Listen, we were all ex-military. Okay, secret service types, black ops. They're the best, but they already know that. Yeah, <laughs> they say, people say you're the best in like several times to characters in the movie. Like, God damn it, you have to do this because you're the best. <laughs> Why me? Because you're the best. Why me? You are fully trained to do this. This is what you do. You were trained by the best. You are the best. It's fucking incredible. The government needs your help once more. I'm not interested. This is not your choice. It's an order from the Pentagon. Then he Rick is assigned to murder a new person who's this other guy who and he's doing some recon in him in the on him in the park and the guy's sitting on a bench mm-hmm. and we get a random shot during this moment of just the sidewalk with words on it and the camera zooms in on it for no reason. You gotta kill this man as service to your country. Yeah. But he's also a veteran serving his country. Yeah, but he's got the drive. <laughs> he's got the drive. We think maybe. We'll see. Probably, yeah, maybe, maybe hopefully. one of you guys does for sure. Well, well, well. Uh, like I said, the brother explains we were all Secret Service, Black Ops. When the government, when the government wanted something secret done, we did it. No questions <laughs> asked. And I was like, that's not what the Secret Service is, bro. The Secret Service is the people who protect the fucking president. They don't go on Black exactly. Ops missions. They're not even. They're, they're not, are, are they even? A- they're not actually even part of the military. I don't right? think so. I don't. I think they're like a personal security detail. Like I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. But but they don't. I I, I do know that Secret Service doesn't go on Black Ops spy missions. Like that's not. Yeah. What that's not their job. They're not Channing Tatum. <laughs> And I, I got to talk about this one little moment is we get a shot of our guy driving the whatever kind of car you said it was down the street. It's a Torino. Yeah. Ford he's Torino. driving it down the street. And there's one really quick shot where he's driving and he hits some ice and fishtails for a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, why is that in the movie, Kyle? That better matter. And it kind of comes back at the very end of the film. Kind of. There's a line, and we'll talk about it at the end, that almost comes back. And I was like, is that why that was in there? Or is that just coincidence? I have no idea. I know you don't know what's going on. I know. We need to talk. It's just not safe at home, okay? Doug, I... I'll tell you when I see you. I love you. And Amy, trust no one. The editing in this, as you mentioned, it's so bad. Think the cuts and 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 part of the biggest problem is the music, because this I, I don't know if ITN is like this is like a rule they have because it's the same thing in every Alex Mazinette movie where every scene in the whole movie has to have music playing through it. Fucking missions, financials, national security plans, locations of missiles that protect our borders. Like everyone was that was on the assignment. You were cleared and released. We can't just. We can't just have a scene of two it's characters all royalty talking. royalty-free, of course. Yeah, it's all terrible royalty-free music, but we can't just have a scene of characters talking. There has to be music playing. And I'm like, is this ITN, like, force you to put music over your whole movie? You're number six on here. 
My situation's a little different, Doc. Did he receive any special treatment while he was here? As you know, we're a private correctional facility for ex-military. What it probably is, because I've done this before, because I, <laughs> I've made bad movies, is uh, your audio quality's not great. Is just covering it up. Just cover it up a little bit. Just slap a little bit of music yeah. in there, and yeah. eh, it's a little less noticeable how bad your audio, <laughs> audio quality is. Sir? Here's the deal. We've been keeping tabs on a very interesting individual. Oh, and I love, so then he Rick goes to kill the guy the second time, and he succeeds this time. And so mm -hmm. let's let's reestablish who these people are, right? They're like super black ops, the tops of the top secret agent guys or whatever. Best of the best of the best, sir. Sir. And he, he kills this guy by standing in a bush 10 feet from him <laughs> with a rifle. Yes. <laughs> and, and the guy just, and he falls over. Yeah. It's, it's great. Right as a football gets to him, he's playing catch with his daughter or something. But these guys, this guy, you would think that this guy with his extensive military training would notice a dude in a bush right behind him with a long rifle, but he sure as shit doesn't at all. He's Not been even. out of the game for a decade, man. Yeah. Oh, and this is the the, the second coffee scene that you mentioned earlier is my favorite. Our mm -hmm. guy pulls up to his coffee shop and the girl, as he pulls up, our guy's like, shit. Shit. He's like super mad. And then uh, she walks over and hands him his coffee in the window. He's like, are you okay, Doug? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Or he says, no. He goes, no. And then he, as she walks away. He just ch chucks it. He chucks the coffee out the window. <laughs> are you okay today? No. You take care of yourself. People start pollution. People can stop it. So it turns out there was two copies of this drive that has a ton of government secrets on it. And it, it's it's just, oh, we sit and listen to Ryan and Doug discuss, they just dump exposition in a truck for like yeah, five minutes yeah. of like, what's this all about? Why you? I was hired for my particular skill in transcoding encrypted messages. Okay. Okay, so in 99, the government stored some very, very important data on two identical drives as backup. It's, oh. it's a thing where they have to stop the movie yeah. and either refresh people on what's going on or inform people because they couldn't be bothered to do it, you know, more organically. Yeah. What do you mean data? What kind of data? Top secret military intel, man. I'm talking missions, financials, national security plans, locations of missiles that protect our borders, like a lot. Who has the drive now? The president and the NSA. No, it's literally just, oh, nobody understands what's happening. Let's sit in a car for 10 minutes and explain what's happening. And even then it still doesn't really make sense. I thought this was over a long time ago. You thought wrong. There's a couple great moments where our guy calls the police at the police station, and as he's talking on the phone, um, it's just a little thing, but so they're cutting back and forth between him and the police station, and the audio switches before the video does. So, like, they're, they're doing the thing where you do the phone call sound effect when you cut to the... Yeah. But his voice switches to that sound effect, like, three frames before the video does. <laughs> Northside has to be involved. I can't explain, but remember that. Lady. I think it must have been a different cinematographer for the uh, the scenes in the doctor's office because this is the only time in the movie this happens, and you could tell that the cinematography varies greatly throughout the course of this movie from mediocre slash okay to like truly terrible. <laughs> but in this one particular in in the doctor's office scenes, they do this thing that doesn't happen anywhere else, which is quick random snap zooms into people's faces every now and then. <laughs> They don't do yes. that anywhere else in the movie. But there's a moment here where Rick is like <laughs> super anxious about half the fact that he killed that guy and the camera's just like whoosh and he's like oh no. <laughs> yeah, that, God, I saw a snap too and I was like why do we have this? What is going on right now? We get some great dialogue between our guy confronts the warden to Doug to confronts the warden. And one of my favorite lines in the whole movie and the way it's delivered is Doug goes up to the warden and he goes, look, if I find out that you're behind this in any way, I will lock you up behind the very bars that you guard. <laughs> and the Academy Award for best screenplay goes to 
Well, like, here's the thing. He wrote it. He, like, he yeah. wrote the script. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Plays dog. So that, that that was one of those lines where he was like, oh, this is so smart. This is going to so be good. so smart. Oh, it's so good. It's so uh, he felt he wrote that line. He was like one of those late night writing sessions where he's like, you know, a few few drinks deep. And he's like, this is it's just pouring out of me right now. It's coming out so pure and so true. I can't stop the truth of blowing from my fingertips. <laughs> if I find out that you're behind this in any way. I will lock you up behind the very bars that you guard. Be careful. Uh, then Rick gets choked out in his creepy dollhouse. Uh, the guy shows up and chokes him to death, I think. Uh, editing's great here. It's really, really good. Um, and then <laughs> yeah. our guy our guy shows up at the house. Our guy shows up, and he's going through this garage that has all these uh, these dolls and stuff. Yeah. And in the most, like, out-of-character situation where it's, it's something like maybe he wrote this super early on or yes. something. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you're talking about this. Yes. Yeah, he didn't know the voice of his character. And this happens not only here. It happens a at few the end. spots, too. Yeah. At the, at, With yeah, the brother, the yeah. End. But it just seems so out of character for everything that is established yeah. for him so far. Yeah. Where he's like cracking wise he's, about he's somebody starts quipping. Who's, who's sure is going to be killed. Yeah. What's up, guys? Oh, this is not okay. He's just quipping. He's like got some zingy one-liners to go off. All of a sudden, this whole movie, he's been like the angsty, like crying in the shower cop. We haven't seen him make a joke the whole film. He's the biting on a crucifix in the shower type of cop, not the the yeah. the, the zingy one-liner type of cop. Yeah. I'm having boys. And like even even though they give him this moment, the editor cuts off one of his jokes before he finishes the last word. Like it just cuts mm -hmm. and I'm like, "What?" I think the editor was like, "No, this is not good. I got to get off of this." Yeah, this it really isn't working out. Let's go ahead and fix this. Oh, this is not okay. And then, uh, so he finds, oh, Rick's dead. Woo, Bo, no, the, another guy we were chasing is dead. Great. Uh, then we, we of course, got to add another character that's irrelevant to the rest of the movie. He visits his dad in a church who's in yeah. one scene. And I guess after, after his mother died, his dad's like, well, I got to go become like a pastor or yeah, something. Yeah, he becomes like so a I'm pastor. Go. And so he's just lighting candles and... I don't know what, what is the point of this scene nothing it's literally he goes hey dad I found our brother he's uh talked to our brother he's in some trouble and dad's like can I help and he's like no and then the scene ends <laughs> there's something in this town that we've never seen can I help no I want to help it's not safe I'll let you know Okay, thanks. This is another one of those moments where they use a fucking drone for no reason. They use a drone inside the church as he's walking down the aisle. Just oh. shoot it with your <laughs> fucking camera. Why? Oh my God. It's so infuriating. Even arguably, you could use a jib there. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the thing. They didn't have a fucking jib, they but they a had jib. a drone. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, again. The little thing about drones. Unless you get a super expensive one, don't have a lot of fluid movement. No, with it. no, especially not. Uh, yeah, it, especially like a mid-range drone like they're using. And because even there's a few times where they use it like it's a crane where it's just like a high stationary shot. But because it's not a, a nice enough drone or it doesn't have a good enough stabilization on the camera and stuff, it's like slightly mm. moving the whole time. And it just uh, it looks terrible. Oh, I got to talk about this one little scene where he goes and talks to the chief and the chief is like pulling him off the case because the NSA is taking over. And this is before the yeah. guy come into the office but he's just talking to the chief and he, he's like if you're taking me off the case then I quit and he flips to the chief his badge and then the badge throws or the chief throws his badge back <clears throat> at him and it's like figure it out or whatever and as the guy's leaving we cut back to a shot of the chief at his desk and I don't know what this shot is and you probably don't remember this but he like He's like turning away and he like looks like he's in pain. And I legit think what happened is he like stubbed his toe under the desk. And it was the only moment of real emotion that they got in the entire movie. So they just left it in because he's just like, ah. Ah, and it's I'm like, like Aragorn breaking his foot yeah, on the, the yeah. helmet. <laughs> For real, I was like, what is that? Oh, it's fucking wild. It's so weird. 
also, so then Doug f- goes to the cabin and finds the Bible that Ryan was hiding there with the list of the people. Which, yeah, what does this yeah. mean? But, I don't know. But he compares it to the list of names he has. And it's like, oh, shocker. Oh, my God. Yeah, we already knew same. this. We knew this. He knew he has had multiple discussions with his brother about these people and about the fact that his brother is on this list. Ryan, if this is someone's sick wish list, we're running out of time. Why is your name on here? Who has the drive now? The president and the NSA. Okay, so let me better understand this. They order you guys to commit murder, lock you up for 10 years, call it protective custody only to let you out, then kill you? Pretty twisted, right? Very. And somehow him there, finding there this a, list. There, there's a level of incompetence here that is just kind of annoying. You're telling me, kid. Yes. Of course. There's another, there's like three scenes in a row, and I can't stress enough, there's like three scenes in a row with our doctor character that end with him picking up a phone and going, get me the warden. Like three in a row! Get me the warden. I need the warden. What is Barclay? What do we need to talk? And there's 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 one there's one in particular where the dude fails to kill the guy the first time. Yeah. And he's like visibly like shaking and angry oh, and he's the like angry making scribble? like marks all over his paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like Arr. And the guy the guy is looking at this and he's like yeah, this is completely normal for a psychologist to have a mental breakdown in <laughs> yeah. front of me. You can't open the fantastic motorized drawing pen. Just turn the pen on and feel it wiggle. It's a giggle. The squiggle wiggle comes with pens of five different colors. Squiggle, the giggle pen that you'll play with for hours. And then the NSA agents are taking over Doug's case. Uh, some great digital zooming in this scene. Like when they come and sit down, like clearly the shot wasn't what they wanted. So the, they digitally zoom it in to kind of fix it in post and it looks terrible. And then and uh, then he explains to his partner, this chief and stuff that, oh, 10 years ago, they put all this stuff on the drive for Y2K 10 years ago. It was about 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. They did 10 years yeah. ago. Listen, 10 years ago, the U.S. government backed up military securities onto a drive. This is the guy that drove me to the hospital 15 years ago when I got oh. shot. Um, the chief goes, Doug, what are you talking about? You can't stop the government. <laughs> and he goes, no, I can't, but I'm in way too deep. <laughs> that dialogue oh is God. so good. <laughs> it's so good. The last name on that list is my brother, and he's one of the only three remaining. If I give up now, I might as well bury him. And then uh, he, the the doctor chokes out one of the last guys with a mail with a mouse cord. <laughs> with mouse a mouse cable. Like Garrett. <laughs> yeah, with a mouse cable. Um, and then he calls up the warden and meets up with them. And they have we get a flashback where they explain the whole plot basically in a flashback. You are being given custody of six soldiers. They are being sentenced to life for espionage and murder. They were part of a covert operation for the recovery of the missing drive. Oh, good Lord, yes. It's literally just a flashback in black and white to explain everything that has happened to this point. A drive worth more money than you and I can ever imagine. We need to find it, who has it and where it is. Your cooperation will be handsomely rewarded. But my favorite moment is that after the flashback ends, he immediately kills him. How does he kill him, Kyle? He like I don't know. Crushes he just his, puts face? his face. <laughs> yeah, he just, like, he just puts his hand over the dude's face, and then it's just like and scene. <laughs> And he says, he, he he literally, my favorite, like, cliche thing, as he's doing that, he goes, shh, shh, <laughs> to him as he's killing him. 
Uh, and then Ryan goes, Ryan's freaking out now, and he goes to, to get the drive. He gets in a canoe and digs, pulls the drive up out of a river in a safe, in a Is trash Is this supposed bag. to be like a 10-year-old safe? Yeah, yeah, it's a 10-year-old safe. A, a 10-year-old digital safe. And it works that fine. He just has power boop, enough boop. to still yep. open. Pops it open. It's all good. It also didn't leak. Nope, not at all. He had it in a trash bag, this- Kyle. It's fine. And then I love this. He turned, he pulls the drive out and this activates and now the government can <laughs> find him. They can find him. And this scene, this sequence of scenes, Kyle, is the best thing in the movie. Because. Oh, were they, they go to the White House? Well, yeah, but for, first, they first, I gotta talk about the White House, but first they pull out, uh, they, there's like a little CGI satellite screen. And I love that it, the, the text of the city that pops up in the bottom is in like, mm-hmm. it's in some font that looks so out of place on like a secret government. Sp- it's like, it's like, it might as well have been Comic Sans that the fucking title of the name of this town popped up on the bottom as but then they get on the phone and they're like oh we found the drive and then they're talking to different people and there's a great line here where one of the guys goes this guy isn't an ordinary cop he won't go down easy that's because he's emotionally invested it's his brother we're after (laughs) and then they call the fucking white house like you said kyle get me the president and they go to a kitchen in the what first off Get me the president. A White House. Why does a White House look like a like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars suburbium New Hampshire? Oh yeah, no, it looks. Yeah, it, no, I, I would think you're going to the low in there. This is like a nice, like you know, quarter million, four hundred thousand. This is a nice upper level. It's a nice kitchen. I wish my kitchen yeah, looked like it's this got kitchen. Granite t- tabletops. Uh, what it doesn't have is staff and no. uh, secret service. It's just literally the, and I don't know anything about the White House, but it's literally the president like poking around in his fridge in the middle of the night, just like looking for a snack or whatever. <laughs> so our guy's poking around, the president of the United States is poking around in the fridge looking for a little snacky snack. And uh, the guy walks in like a, one of his guys walks in is like, sir, they found him. <laughs> and he's like, let me guess. It's Ryan. <laughs> and I was like, Operation Y2K, a surfacer. Let me guess. Ryan. The president of the United States knows like all of the details of this particular case and like and knows he's the- at least he's at least like. In one or possibly two administrations. Yeah. Removed that was one of my other started. questions. I was like, do they know how long presidents serve in this movie? Or has in their mind, <laughs> has this guy been the president the whole time from now? 19- president for life. <laughs> this drive became active this morning. We've got a real problem if this gets out. Make sure this ends quietly and find him. And I love, so then Ryan shows up at Doug's house and it's like, we gotta go. They're killing everyone who was involved. Who is? The government, the FBI, the NSA. We're just collateral damage at this point. Yeah, man. That's been the plot of this whole movie. Why are you... He knows. That's yes, literally... Been, they've both been trailing it. Yes, this is literally the only thing we've been watching the whole time. Okay. Well, now it all makes sense. Lock up everyone involved for the last 10 years. Flush out the drive, and when the drive unlocks... Boom. Uh, so then they go to a secret warehouse that the brother has where he has a bunch of guns and stuff or something. I, whatever. It's like his mm-hmm. bug out warehouse. And they have the drive. And now this is the, the guy calls and it's like, we got to meet up or whatever. Or no, he goes, he's got to go meet the chief first. Hey, Ryan, wait for me in the barn out back. There's somebody I got to meet first. Mm-hmm. The chief is in some building. He's got to go meet in the, the chief. In this abandoned building? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know why he's got to meet the chief there, but whatever. And then he gets in there, and the chief's tied to a chair, and the doctor's there. Evil doctor's there. Uh, he pulls a gun on him, and he's like, where's the drive? Give me the drive. Blah, blah, blah. They shoot. He stabs the chief in the neck. Okay. Don't. <laughs> and murders him. And our guy misses, like, three point-blank shots. Like, literally. <laughs> So they get away and they're standing and they're talking to each other. He's like, let's make a deal. And then our guy gets a gun on him 
and and the doctor's like, here's the deal. Get the drive. Meet me at this place three in hours. three hours. I'll get you the drive. I can get it. You got three hours. Uh, don't bring any backup. No backup. And that's and this is the big climax of the movie now. And so our guy meets up with his brother, and this is the other scene you were talking about, where all of a sudden we got like quippy jokes and banter between yeah, our Yeah, what the, what is going on? Ah, uh, what happened to you? Woo! I had a scheduled meeting with a psychologist. Those guys really mess with your head, don't they? It doesn't make like any they're sense. They're driving to the location, right? They're driving to the spot. It's, well, they're getting they're ready to drive there, yeah. They're like getting the forth. car or yeah, whatever, they're, yeah. They just got back and forth going while they're in the car. Yeah. You know, it's too bad we have to leave. You really know how to live. Huh, thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. It's super cozy here. I was kidding. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, they're getting ready to go, and, and, the, and Doug turns to Ryan. He's like, is that what you're going to wear? Are you going to change, or are you going to go like that? What do you mean? These are my clothes. Changing or what? Good point. Okay. And I was like, what is this? See, it's so out of place. Like, it's like a comedy bit in the middle of this super dramatic, like, angsty cop drama that all of a sudden we're like we're getting like our lethal weapon scene <laughs> like i was like what is going on getting too old for this shit oh it's so weird it's amazing they get to the spot uh, and our guy shows the other up dude brought up back up yeah he brought he brought back up the two the two uh, NSA, NSA agents. Yeah. yeah they're there with guns and meanwhile i gotta mention i gotta mention real quick this. where this takes place before we get to what happens is mm -hmm. this is their big secret meet up with all of the government secrets trading thing they're like 10 feet from the main road in the town you can see traffic yeah. driving through the background constantly yeah it was supposed to be the the, the back of the prison yeah. behind the prison is what they said but it seems like everybody but, could see this happening <laughs> but sure so he hands them he hands them the drive it's over we're done it's never over and then they're checking it and you figure they do like something where he's like putting it in and it's blank or something like that no they don't do any of that no you just hear very very quiet underneath all the other audio hey this drive is blank <laughs> and then gunfire and then gunfire who's killing people around my town we haven't had one problem here guns blank fucking goes crazy and they just start shooting everybody uh our sniper the brother's on a sniper rifle just starts sniping everybody Everybody's dead, and then again, out of nowhere, our guy shoots everybody, turns to the camera, like turns almost directly down the barrel of the camera <laughs> and sa and winks and says, should have been a dentist. <laughs> should have been a dentist. <laughs> what? It's not even a callback to anything. <laughs> It's literally not a callback to anything. He just says, should have been a dentist. This is like the one-liner at the end of Catwoman, where it's like, what? This doesn't even mean anything. It's overtime. Ah! So bad. And then, callback earlier. The cavalry shows up. Yeah, the cavalry oh, shows well, up, well, and he goes, what took you so long? And they're like, the roads are icy. No, Cap, not all right. What took you guys so long? Sorry, the roads were icy. And I was like, they paid off this, the fishtailing icy street from the earlier in the movie. Good job, movie. Look at you. And then, and then they chuckle and they're like, ha <laughs> <laughs> Northside Correctional, a privately funded ex-military prison, houses some of the most deadly ex-military personnel. The roads are icy, huh? <laughs> we just murdered a bunch of people and solved the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then and then this is where uh, we get the, oh, oh, remember the wife? She exists, insert shot. And then we see the brother grab the drive in the woods and run off. And then we fade to black and the credits roll. And this movie has its own theme song, Kyle. <laughs> It has a trust no one theme song. Yeah, it was like the only song that was produced for this film. Oh, it's incredible. Oh, it's so good. And like you said, they are making a sequel. I was so excited. It's called it like Trust No One or something. Secrecy. Trust no one. Secrecy. Yeah, it's in pre-production. And apparently this one, uh, our auteur is directing as well as writing in and starring. Oh, in. So boy. we can only guarantee that it's going to be ama amazing. I also got to mention, I sent you this picture. This guy... Our auteur, he's in fucking Top Gun in, Maverick. <laughs> yes, yes, he's there with. I'm, I'm not sure if he's with Tom Cruise. No, I don't scene, know. But 
But he's there as one of the, he's the in party the trailer. Navy officers. Yeah, he's well because he's credited on IMDb and he has a name. It's like he has a he has a, he got a fly na- or whatever it's called. He's like Stumbler or something. Like is his like name? You know, yeah. he gets a name. I, I swear it's like Stumbler or something like that. And then I was mm-hmm. like, I wonder if he's in the trailer. And I clicked through. He's in the trailer. He's, he's in the trailer. <laughs> I was like, good for you, dude. Good for you being a background pilot in. Awesome. Uh, uh, in Top Gun Maverick, it's incredible. Um, now the only thing is, is he going to be in the beach? Uh, the beach. I know. Scene? I was. I, that's that's the money <laughs> shot right there. Literally the money shot. <laughs> Tom Cruise is like nearly sixty. He could still take off a shirt and put us both to shame. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> For his whole life, that will be true. <laughs> Kyle, this camera's about to run out of batteries. What do you? Uh, I don't know what to give this one. It's 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 weird. There's enough like craziness. Yeah, in it. it's not like super. It's there's parts of it that are boring, but it's not but super then there's boring. There's parts of it that you just are like, what, what? <laughs> I would say probably I would good, give it bad. A good bad. Yeah, it's close, but I would give it good bad. Um, I think if it was, it's not even long. It's like an hour thirty. But if it was like an hour twenty, like there's a couple scenes that could be trimmed that would make it even better. But it's not that big a deal. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime mm. for free. If you or if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch free. It's also on Tubi. You don't even have to. Have it's on Tubi for free if you want to watch it. Where I think most of ITN stuff, like all of Alex Mays' movies, are on Tubi, um, so you can watch it there. It's called Trust No nice. One, uh, and we'll be looking forward to the sequel uh, to this masterpiece. Uh, Kyle, uh, hopefully this is our only episode we're gonna have to do like this. Um, hopefully it worked out. We'll see. Uh, we're, I'll find <laughs> out when I start editing I'll put it. My, I'll just put myself into a robot body. Yes, and then I'll just send the robot body there. Perfect. Sounds good. Uh, well, hopefully we only have to do one like this. Maybe two. We'll see. Um, but uh, yeah. hopefully it'll work out. Uh, as always, you can support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash GB or BB. Uh, support us for as much money as you want. We have podcasts. We did a huge, long, like, hour and a half long Q&A for the 100th episode. There's, like, ton. We answered, like, 50 questions or something like that. Um, so if you ever want to – anything you ever wanted to find out about us, you can do in that. Um, what else? Uh, I have a podcast called The Film Slate where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this is out, the movie – or the movie will have been done – will have been done doing is First Blood. Uh, or it will be coming out Rambo? soon. Yeah, Rambo. Or yeah. the first, it's called First Blood, yeah. Um, and then you get to see the uh, alternative ending where Sylvester Sloan dies in the end. Whoa, spoiler What? Shit. Oh, no. Um, so that's our. Uh, that's the one that when this is out that you'll be able to listen to. Mm. Kyle, you Twitch stream occasionally? You still doing that? Occasionally, yes. Yeah. There you go. I do that occasionally. Brian's, so it's a lot of Brian's fun. noted. Yep, he's done yep. for it as well. I um, didn't do it, do it a little bit there, here and there. Uh, so yeah, until next time, everybody, keep safe. Uh, keep watching movies. Uh, especially. especially well in, in this case we gave a good recommendation yes. I'll tell you that at least yeah, uh, for uh, trust no one trust number one trust number one Kyle are you going to get back to your game there <laughs> you're going to get back to your maybe, red deck maybe <laughs> well I, I can try there you go hey I forgot how PS4 works there oh we go. look at that just back into his oh, game oh it's got to reload it's oh you're reload. in it you're in it you're in it hey yeah, yeah. there right, we go bye guys there we go I'm, I'm a cowboy bye guys wave to the people Kyle Wave, wave, bye. Bye, bye everybody. Okay. I got guns. Stupid horse.